Hey everybody, welcome back to Trinity Dairy. It's June 25th, 2024. It's a beautiful day out. It looks like we got about three days of decent weather and then a chance to rain again. So we are going to go try to cut some hay. Um, got the new to us 489 New Holland Haybine. Went through that, greased it up, checked all the gearboxes. They were all full. Um, fired it up. It seemed to run good. When I first started it, it had kind of a clunk in the rollers. I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, but then when I revved it up a little bit, then it went away. I think it's just because... These rollers seem like they're in really good shape. None of the shims have even been taken out yet. Um, they might be. There is an adjustment for the timing on them, so they run together. So I think maybe that's just a little bit off, because once I sped the RPMs up a little bit, it was fine. Um, the rollers on our other hay binder are so worn out that I don't think they even come close to <laughs> touching each other anymore. But anyway, so we're going to go and get this. Like I said, greased it up. Gearboxes were full. The head bearing on the sickle has got a little bit of play in it but i don't think right now it's enough to worry about i do have another one um i can throw in there if i need to but that's pretty common on these um so yeah it sounds good i think i think this is going to be a pretty good machine but um we're going to find out i've got probably about eight acres ten acres to cut um the one field below the farm is really thick really heavy hay i'm not going to go down there first i'm going to go to this other one it's a little thinner hay and it's a little bit or a lot easier to access so if i take this out there if i have trouble if i need to come back and get the other one or whatever i don't have to cross the creek and come through the pasture and do all that so that's where we're going to start but uh anyway so yeah we're going to head out and do that also, uh, don't forget to like and share the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't done that. So I was down here under this thing, greasing this U-joint down here, and I got looking at this belt. And this belt drives the wobble box um, that drives the sickle. I had Jordan turning the rollers by hand so I could grease this. And I noticed that this belt is extremely loose, which is not uncommon. It's pretty easy to adjust. There's four bolts over here on the outside. You loosen these up, and then there's a bolt here you screw in, pulls that shaft back, and tightens the belt. But I was just wondering, and of course I probably never know, but it's a good possibility that somebody was cutting with this and it quit cutting and they assumed that the gearbox went out and brought it to the sale. That belt is loose enough. I haven't tried cutting anything with it yet. I've just ran it empty. But that belt is loose enough that I don't think that it would cut. If I took it out in the hay field, I think it would just slip because I could stop it with just my arm rubbing up against the pulley. So... Um, if you ever have one of these quit cutting, um, before I would think, or before I would just say that the wobble box went out, I would definitely check that belt. Um, because it's kind of tucked away in there, you know, you don't always just see it out in the open. But our wobble box on our other machine went out last year. The lower seal blew out. And... I called New Holland and they had a Reedman one and I want to say it was like $4,500 or something. It was way, worth way more than the machine was worth. I was able to find a parts machine. The rollers were bad in it, but the wobble box was good for 500 bucks, so that's what I put in it. And this one seems to be fine, but I just wanted to show you that, how loose that belt was. And, and I don't know if that's the case, why it was at the sale it. Maybe it was cutting yet for them because it looked like they had cut some hay because there was some hay in the cutter bar that didn't look too old. But um, yeah, something to think about. I guess if yours quits cutting, I would check that first. <laughs> So now 
we're just cutting hay with our new 489 hay vine. And just like Dad said, we want to try a little bit of lighter hay. So this is the hay we're cutting. Not the best stuff. A little bit of alfalfa in here. Just kind of look everywhere. So there's some, I can't see anywhere, but there's some a little bit of alfalfa in here. Mostly it's just this stuff, whatever that's called. So yeah, taking the first swath with the new hay mine. All right, so I took it out. Um, Jordan went up on the hill. He was going to get some video of me coming up, but I didn't even get that far. I went maybe 20, 30 feet. As soon as I set it down, I was in a real heavy spot of hay, and it... Um, it jammed up right away. It stopped the reel and stopped the sickle. I think that belt that was loose, I think I need to tighten it more. Um, after I ran it a little bit, I felt it now after I came back here. It seems like it's still kind of loose. I think it could be tightened a little more yet. So I'm going to do that. Because um, that runs the reel and the sickle. I am also going to lower the shoes. Probably one or two holes. I'm going to set it up the same as I have our other one. It's cutting, in my opinion, way too low. Uh, maybe if this was some newer seating or something where you didn't have the old sod, but the guards were getting all clogged up in the old sod, the old dead grass that's laid down. and So that's part of it too. It's cutting down and stuff that it shouldn't be cutting. And I also noticed it seems like the reel is spinning quite fast um, compared to our other one. And I got to check that that's changed on this uh, this pulley here. I've never changed it, so I got to look in the book and see how to do it. Something to do with these bolts on the outside edge, but you can you can bring that together or spread it out um, depending on how you how you want it. But uh, I don't know. It looks like it's pretty far in. We'll go over and see where the other one's at. If that one's about the same or. It's hard to tell when you're not running them both at the same time, but... This one, with the shoes, it's got five holes in the shoes and it's at the pool. I guess it ain't too much different. They're probably sitting about the same. But I'm going to tighten that outside belt a little bit more and lower those shoes down and then we'll try it again. All right, well, I put the shoes down to the same setting that the other machine is on. Um, they were pretty much all the way up, so... And it definitely didn't hurt them to uh, get dropped down some and i did tighten that main drive belt a little bit more i did not mess with the real speed at all so we'll try these changes out first before i do that um, if it's still giving me trouble when we go back now i'm probably just going to switch over to the other machine to get this hay cut and then we can we can mess with this after i don't think there's anything seriously wrong with it i think it just needs to get uh, kind of dialed in but I want to get this hay cut today, so if this doesn't work out here now and doesn't want to cut right yet, I'll probably be switching machines. All right, time for round two.
Well, those adjustments seem to have done the trick. Um, I think part of the reason too with them shoes, this tractor sits a lot lower than most tractors. So that's gonna change the angle of your, of your uh, guards. So that probably made a difference too um, with where they had the shoes set at, depending on what they were cutting with. But I don't, there's no way they were cutting with as loose as that belt was. Because I mean, I, I moved that tensioner quite a ways before I first came out here and it still wouldn't cut. I had to tighten it up more. But it seems to be cutting fine now. Um, this grass along this end is pretty thick down in that hole. A lot of really fine grass, real thick, and it's cutting right through it. Um, this field, my intention, I got two fields. I got this piece and I got one down below that's new, pretty new seating. Um, this field is really old seating. I don't think this field's been plowed. Um, there was corn in here when I was a little kid, about six years old, so that's about over 30 years ago now. And I don't think this section has been plowed since. The other two around it here that I've already cut, they've been plowed maybe a couple times since then, but I don't think this one has. So that's mostly brome. There's a little bit of alfalfa, a little bit of trefoil, but it's Tuesday today. Tomorrow's supposed to be pretty good, and Thursday's supposed to be pretty good, so I'm gonna maybe try to dry bale this. Um, Thursday, I've got Caleb across the road there a friend of mine he's cutting some hay today i think he's got a lot of alfalfa in his so he asked if i could bale and wrap for him on thursday um, he doesn't have a huge piece either but um, i think if i leave this till thursday and i gotta dry bale this we still have plenty of time to get his done the other field that i'm gonna cut that's gonna be pretty heavy that's i'm sure gonna have to be wrapped there's quite a bit of alfalfa in there Last time I was down there, none of it had bloomed out yet. I'm sure it probably has by now, but just with the weather, I wasn't able to get down and get it done. Um, I'm hoping that field's pretty low, like river level, kind of low. I'm hoping it hasn't flooded up into there, but I guess we'll find out when we get there. Hopefully the ground is good enough down there to hold it up. But anyway, I'm gonna keep cutting here and get this cut, and we'll probably come back and get some video when we get started on that other piece. All right, well, we had a little change of equipment here. I decided to put uh, old haybine on and finish cutting with that, or cut with that. Um, this one, I had a little bit of a breakdown, nothing major. I was cutting, all of a sudden I heard this terrible banging noise. I couldn't figure out what it was when I was cutting, so I got off and looked, and this, um, oh, there's an arm here. It holds the head, it kind of stabilizes the head, and it bolts up in here. And this bolt either came loose or broke or whatever. So this arm fell down and it was just banging on this thing here. So um, I was going to run out to the parts machine, grab a bolt and a bushing out of there and stick in here, but um, it's not that serious of a deal. The other machine is all ready to go, so I figured for right now, since I want to get this cut, We'll just swap machines and I'll get that uh, taken care of on a on a rainy day or something. Um, unless something happens with this one and I need that one, then I'll fix it then. But, um, so yeah, switch machines. I brought the tractor back in the yard, hosed out the side panels and the radiator a little. It was running a little bit warm today, but they were pretty gunked up. I haven't sprayed them out in a while, so I think it'll be better now. So I'm going to take this out and do some more cutting, but I guess it's about the same as the other one. But I've run the other one enough to know that all the major components seem to be working well. It was cutting good. Um, didn't have any other issues, so I don't think that's anything too major. But we are going to keep going with the old one. go we got it all laid down cut nice um, I think this is gonna be some pretty nice hay this stuff was really really thick I couldn't believe it 
this field was new first cutting and new seeding last year and I took the first crop off and there wasn't a lot and the second cutting um, it didn't I didn't even cut it a couple of the low spots had a little orchard grass but I just left it I figured most of the seeding kind of died out because it was so dry well then when we came down here to check on it I mean it was like all waist high the clover and alfalfa and everything so I would have liked to have cut it last week but the weather just didn't cooperate so it's a little bit more mature than I would like um, a lot of the alfalfa wasn't bloomed yet the uh, clover and trefoil was bloomed and of course a lot of daisies you could see that a little bit of some other weeds but this field um, didn't really get much for weed control quite a few years back I had some corn down here when I first broke this field and of course it got sprayed and everything like everything else and then I kind of I can't remember why if the road washed out getting down here or what but I didn't um, I didn't have anything here for a few years I'm gonna flip you guys around I didn't have anything down here for a few years and I get brushy again and stuff so then we reclaimed it again um, plowed it and stuff I think I've got that on video and I put some corn down here I had some old conventional seed it was from like 2010 or 2012 or something um, so I turned up the rate on the planter and I planted that in here and it came up we had hauled manure down here so there was a lot of wild oats and stuff or oats that grew up that were in the manure and the corn grass weeds all that so I just flail chopped that for the cows so it never got sprayed um, and then I had some rye down here and different stuff and then I seeded it in so it never really had much for weed control but uh, it's thick there's a lot down here and I think it's gonna be pretty decent so hopefully we can get this wrap tomorrow um, there was a fawn in there I don't think I got it with the hay bind but it kept running into the hay as I was cutting I never seen it run out the mom was kind of down here on the edge but I never saw it anywhere in the middle so it must have come out at some time but hopefully I didn't hit it it was so thick I couldn't see see it I could just see it running through the grass and see the grass moving you know but um, anyway it's really drying down here now it's like 86 degrees yet and there's a good wind blowing so it should dry out good get this bailed tomorrow I think that other piece I cut um, the way it's drying I think that'll make dry hay so I don't think I'm gonna bother wrapping that there's not gonna be a lot there um, and it's not that great a hay anyway so no sense to waste wrap on it if I don't need to um, so anyway, I'm gonna head back up to the yard. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's the next day. We're down here on that uh, the last field we finished cutting there last night. Um, the one we're gonna bail for baleage. Got the V-rake down here. Um, I'm gonna make the first round, and then I'll probably have Justin take over. I'm gonna make the first round just because there's so much brush and stuff along the outside edge. Um, just make sure you don't get hooked sometimes it's a little tricky so we're gonna get started with that and get this rolled up um, I gotta run to town and get some more wrap this afternoon but it looks like it's drying down nice so I think this will be a good moisture get it rolled up let the bottom dry a little bit and uh, should be about perfect for wrapping yeah nice and green underneath yet just getting a crunchy on the top so we'll make a round and see how it looks. Made the first round now Justin's gonna take over
right, we're down here baling. I've made a couple rounds. It's going good. I'm not making them full size because it's there's plenty of moisture in it. But I did slow down a gear. Um, this baler, to, the slower you drive, the tighter bale it'll make. So I did slow down a gear, but it's um, it's it's good. It's crunchy, but you can still feel the stems and stuff are are pretty tough so there's a little more grass in this area so this is a little bit crunchier but um i got what one two three four five six seven bales so far so that's not too bad i think they're probably four foot tall maybe a little bit more so that's pretty good so we're going to keep on going justin went to go rake that other field that i was hoping to dry bale because it dried good yesterday and it's been drying good today and that was just grass and it was kind of thin. So if I get this done, um, I might be able to get that bailed yet today too. Then uh, tomorrow, I just got a bail over at Caleb's there. He's got some alfalfa to bail and wrap. So it would be nice if I could get everything here done today. Then we'd just have to do his tomorrow. But anyway, I'm not gonna get done if I don't get moving. So we'll keep going. All right, well, we got everything bailed up. I got the dry bales bailed. There was like 11, I think, or 10, a little over 10. Um, so we're heading out now to get the heavier, high moisture bales to get them wrapped. I got the old 530 back in action. Uh, the clutch is still weak on it, so we're just using it to load. Because the field down here, you gotta kinda cross a bunch of water standing in the road, and it's a little bit muddy. I don't think the skid steer are gonna cross there, so we'll take this. I think it'll work good enough for that little bit. You'll have to excuse the squeak. Uh, the fan belt is a little bit loose on here, so we gotta get that tightened up. But it, uh, it should work for tonight, so we'll see if we can get them loaded. I think there was 17 bales, 17 or 18. So we'll see if we can get them wrapped up tonight.
Bye.